Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that be linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Now straight into it, William Saliba, a player that um, a lot of Arsenal fans have been getting quite excited about, even though I know a lot of them have not really heard of him before, but they look at him and they think he just looks the part of a centre-back that we could do. If he's very young, only 18 years of age, but um, they're really talking him up over there in France. Plays for uh, St Etienne currently, uh, a tall, um, talented centre-back, good at bringing the ball out of the back, um, good in the air, and really a hot prospect, one really for the future. Arsenal really interested in him. Now, Le Sports um, over there in France, they are reporting that Arsenal are currently in negotiations for the player. Um, and are leading the race to sign him. We do know as well that Manchester United are very interested um, also in Saliba. But it is Arsenal apparently who are said to be leading the race to sign him. However, the fee will not be small. Um, Saint Etienne said to be holding out for up to £28 million for him. We all know the stories about our limited budget um, this summer. But... Um, does look like Arsenal are in negotiations for William Saliba. Whether it will get done or not, that's a different matter. Negotiations mean you're sat around the table, you're talking, you're bidding, you're saying what you can do, they're saying what they want. You know, it's just the first stages of it. But if it could come through, I think that'd be a good deal for Arsenal because, yes, we need players that are going to be, you know, here for the future. It's about building for the future for the moment for Arsenal. Although I still also feel... But Arsenal need um, an experienced um, centre-back as well. But um, Arsenal look like they're negotiating for William Saliba. Now, maybe to raise the money for a player like a, a William Saliba, as I said, we've got a limited budget. Um, maybe selling certain players may be the way to raise that money. And one of those players who looks like he could be on the way out of the club is Callum Chambers. Of course, another centre-back at Arsenal. Um, was out on loan at Fulham last year, had a very successful loan period. Even though Fulham got uh, relegated, he was one of the few players that um, you know got some good ratings. Uh, he was the uh, Fulham player of the season. Um, played a lot of that role as a defensive midfielder, but did it very, very well. And uh, you know, I, got, I know I've got a couple of uh, mates who are Fulham fans and they were singing his praises, saying Callum Chambers had a really, really good season. Now... We're told that Lazio are interested in signing him today. Um, Arsenal are said to be prepared to sell Callum Chambers if they can get a fee of round about £12.5 million. And, uh, you know, that would be represent a loss because we paid £16 million for him when we bought him. Um, he's still, though, he's still quite young, still only 24 years of, old, uh, of age, right? So... For anybody buying him, you know, I mean, they're still buying a relatively young um, player and a player who's had a year's experience playing every game um, in the Premier League and also has been at Arsenal. So there'll be quite a few clubs interested in him, as well as a club like Lazio. I'd expect uh, quite a few Premier League clubs to be interested in him as well, especially some of those that may be down towards the lower end of the Premier League. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Callum Chambers, but... If they could get, like I say, 12.5 million or 12 million, that would be able to offset some of the fee that they may potentially pay for somebody like um, a William Saliba. Now, we spoke about this guy a couple of days ago, Jordan uh, Veratu, uh, plays for Fiorentina. He's in, he plays in the midfield. Uh, had a, Again, another player had a very good season last year for Fiorentina and uh, subsequently has you know, interest is uh, out there from quite a lot of clubs. Previously played for um, Aston Villa as well. And uh, when he was at Aston Villa, he didn't have a very good time of it when he was in the Premier League. Um, as I said a few days ago, there's quite a few Aston Villa fans expressing surprise that Arsenal would be interested in, in him because he was so poor uh, when, he, when he was um, at Aston Villa. But uh, yes, Arsenal are interested in him. And uh, Lekeep reported that Arsenal have made an official approach um, for Vera 2 from Fiorentina. As I, scared, uh, as I said, decent season last year. Four, five goals, three assists, and his contract expires in 2021. So we know that Arsenal are looking for a replacement for Aaron Ramsey. Could this guy be that fellow? Again, let's see what happens. 
Yannick Carrasco, every day we're going on about Carrasco. Is it happening? Is he going to sign? I mean, again today, still in the media, still lots of talk around it that Arsenal are the team that are negotiating to try and get this deal done, to bring Yannick Carrasco to the Emirates. Um, we did a poll on it yesterday and I asked fans, so I go, do you think Yannick Carrasco would be a good signing at Arsenal? 88%, that is massive, said yes. Only 12% said no. So you can see what the fans think of it. Fans would be very enthusiastic about the signing of Yannick Carrasco. Uh, will it get done? We're going to have to wait and see what happens. Yes, that famous line. Right, um, David Ospina. What's going to happen with David Ospina? Now, it seems like he was on his way to uh, Napoli, where he was on loan last season. But it seems to have stalled a bit. Um, Napoli seem to be playing a bit of hardball here. Napoli were very smart with the David Ospina thing. Um, he played uh, 24 games for them last season. Now, if he had played 25 games it would have activated an immediate clause where they had to buy him for uh, next season. But he played 24, just one short of that. Very smart move by um, Napoli. Um, and now Napoli are saying, right, we'll buy him, but we want to pay £2 million for uh, David Ospina. Arsenal said to be holding out for about £3.1 million. And uh, lots of rumours around today that Arsenal have said to uh, Napoli, you know what, we're going to give you a week. Sort yourself out. You've got one week to sort yourself out. If you don't sort yourself out in that time, then we're going to start um, either looking at selling him somewhere else or maybe even just bring him back. Remember, Arsenal don't have a backup goalkeeper now that they've sold Petr Cech, although there is a lot of talk that they may promote up Emilio Martinez to take that um, spot. So, uh, Ospina in a bit of limbo at the moment, but um, you have to see how that one develops out. But um, lots of negotiation going on there. Now, I spoke about this on yesterday's show. I spoke about the fact that AC Milan are interested in uh, Lucas Torreira. Um, some really uh, interesting comments coming out from Lucas Torreira yesterday. He was uh, doing an interview over there in Uruguay, and he was being asked about his time in England. And uh, I don't know whether to worry about this or not. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, listen to what he had to say. These are his quotes. I'm um, speaking in Uruguay. He says, um, I don't know if there are any... If there are many things that I enjoy about England, wow. He says, um, I think it was better in Italy. England is a totally different world, a very large country. The language barrier has stopped me to be able to relate to with my teammates and with people. It's very difficult when you can't have a dialogue. And then he also said, and so is the climate. You go out in the morning and it's cloudy you arrive late at your home and it's cloudy. I'll tell you what, you don't want to be around this week. It's been terrible, the rain here in the UK. And um, he did actually go on to say later on um, in, in his, um, in his uh, interview that uh, as the years pass, I'm going to be adapting. But um, should we be worried about that? He's obviously not adapted. What he's saying there, basically, he's not adapted to England. Maybe on the pitch he's adapted, but off the pitch... He's having problems, he can't speak the language, he's having problems communicating with um, his teammates. He's found the weather, a real culture shock, you know what I mean? The rain, the, the, the cloudiness, the greyness over here in the UK. Um, and he's saying that, you know, it's a big country. He's obviously not used to living in a massive city like London before. But I think the encouraging thing there is saying that he is you know, willing to adapt as the years go by. It's a big step for a player like this. Remember, he's sort of come out of nowhere and then he's found himself now um, in London. But I like the fact that he said he is looking to adapt. But there will be clubs hovering now and looking at that and thinking, hmm, what if I put a little offer in to bring him to Spain? Sunny, nice, speak Spanish. You know, <laughs> this is the worry. Right, so, you know, we, we have to keep a little eye on this, but I, I, I don't think uh, Lucas Torreira will be going anywhere because, as I said, um, fans' favourite. Um, he also went on in that interview to say, or he went in, a, in another interview, sorry, it was, where he was talking about how much joy it filled him with when, when he scored that goal against Tottenham. And, you know, I think this is quite common for players coming from abroad, particularly from South America, that it will take them a little time to adapt 
but hopefully he will be staying with us and none of these uh, AC Milan rumours and rumours of other clubs are true. Um, and Carl Jenkinson, what's going to be happening with him? He's been at the um, Arsenal for a very, very long time. Remember that famous picture where you had the English core? Well, he's kind of the last remaining um, member of that English core that's at Arsenal. He's not really playing. He's not really figuring. There's a lots of uh, rumours going around that um, Celtic uh, having a little look at Carl Jenkinson. Um, of course, they could lose Kieran Tierney. And um, they're sort of eyeing up Jenkinson as a possible replacement. Um, Arsenal said to want about £11.25 million for uh, Carl Jenkinson. I think they'd be uh, struggling to get that. <laughs> I have to be honest, because he's not really played, has he, over the past few years. How are they going to justify asking for that sort of fee? But um, that's said to be what Arsenal want. Maybe Arsenal go offer. Carl Jenkinson to Celtic as a part exchange for Tierney. What about that? That would be a that would be a good deal, wouldn't it? Um, but uh, looks like he's a player that Arsenal looking to move out um, this season. But will there be any takers? There hasn't been over the past couple, so let's see how that one develops. All right, let's get into a few of your comments. Um, John Penfold says, "Don't buy don't buy Claude Maurice. We have players like Saka and Nelson." Give them a chance. There's a growing amount of fans out there that are saying that, you know, we need to give some of these uh, young players a chance um, this season. I think, you know, I think we will see a lot of more of them young players getting a chance. And it's good that a lot of fans, for the first time, are sort of saying, yeah, yeah we want to see some of these guys play. And I definitely think Joe Willock, for instance, will get a lot more game time um, next season. Um, Kazim says, uh, AC Milan can't have Torreira but can have Emery. We need to get him out of this club. He's a shambles. Wow. Wow. Unai Emery, a shambles. Um, listen, no doubt it was a, it was a poor end to the season. Start of the season, you know, it was harsh. Really, with the fixtures coming out. We remember how ki- unkind those fixtures were to us last season and some of the games that we, we had to play against, you know, started off against Man City and Chelsea. He then recovered, went on a great run. Then there was a dip at Christmas. Then he recovered it back. And then, you know, a poor end to the season. But I think we've got to give Unai Emery time. It's his first season. He, like Torreira, is adapting. You see how hard it is for a player. Imagine for a manager with all the pressure on that as well. So we've got to give him time. He's got to, he deserves to have at least another season. Um... We get there to uh, Dylan Majar. He says, when will Arsenal buy players immediately? They always give heartache during the transfers for their fans. That is true. We always take ages. Although last summer we were getting deals done pretty quickly. Um, But at the moment, nothing happening yet. But I reckon there will be some movement pretty soon. Um, Daryl Spencer says, Arsenal should forget about Pellegrini. Not convincing enough. That's Lorenzo Pellegrini for Roma. Um, there's lots of talk that Arsenal are very interested in, in, in signing him again as a sort of Aaron Ramsey replacement. And final one, um, Sabab says, what's going to happen first? AFTV reach 1 million subscribers or Arsenal sign their first player of the season? <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I would love to get to a million subscribers, so keep subscribing here to AFTV just as much as I would love to see Arsenal bring in some... We, listen, we need some players, some... Ah, the, the team at the moment just so needs an injection of fresh blood into that team. It really, really does. And I think the fans need a bit of exciting. You know, it was a traumatic end of the season for us. That's why every fan's sort of out there thinking, come on, do something to get us excited for next season, especially with the fixtures out now. Let's get excited about the season ahead. Um, Thanks for watching the show today. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow.